listen, a good reminder for everybody, because I forgot until this morning, no. but daylight saving time begins this Sunday. Mm -hmm. That means that we spring forward, mm -hmm. which is great because we get more sun, but sure. it's also terrible because we lose an hour of sleep and we can't afford for that. For people like my Yipik, aka out Alex Lee. So our next guest is sharing some tips and tri tricks to help you adjust to the time change. Joining us live this morning, friend of the show, Dr. Michael Bruce, AKA the sleep doctor. By the way, if you were wondering, he is a clinical psychologist and sleep medicine specialist. Welcome back, sir. Thank you. Always good to be with you ladies. Well, well, well. Uh, can we talk a little bit about what our bodies and our brains are actually doing while we're sleeping? Absolutely. So what's interesting about this is that we're seeing two types of restoration. We see our physical restoration, which has a tendency to occur in the first third of the night during stages three and four. Okay. And then we see a mental restoration that has a tendency to occur towards the last third of the night. And unfortunately, that's the area that we're going to see we're going to get a deficit because we're going to lose an hour coming up. And so we're going to have a little bit of problem at least that first day or two with our mental restoration. Great. Wow. And that, that brings up a good point because it's, ju it's just one hour, mm -hmm. but it always leaves us feeling a little bit of grogginess for mm -hmm. a couple of days, right. that restoration. Uh, so what exactly does that mean? I, I feel like it, it, it ties back to the circadian rhythm somehow because everything yeah. goes back to yeah. the circadian yeah. rhythm and the disruption of it. Right. No, you're, you're absolutely right. But one of the things that we kind of think about is when we lose an hour, it's kind of like taking a plane flight for an mm -hmm. hour. Mm -hmm. So our bodies will naturally adjust but with this particular one where we spring forward and we lose that hour, if you're already sleep deprived, yeah. whew, much worse. Um, so <laughs> what ends up happening is, by the way, the day after the, that you lose an hour has been known as the number one day for car accidents in the oh, United yeah. States, <laughs> like the last gosh knows how many years. So what we know is we're already sleep deprived. We lose an hour. Now we're super sleep deprived. So, mm. you know, if you really can over that weekend, it's going to be good for you to maybe get in bed 15, 20, 30 minutes early, yeah. um, you probably could use it. Right. Dr. Bruce, I'm gonna need you to come here and give my poor Alex Lee a little, a treat of sorts. Cause this, <laughs> people who work overnight hours, this is yes. just, I re and I've been there. I have been there, it's tough. So you mentioned one of the tips is try to start adjusting earlier rather than later. I also remember when my kids were little that this, oh, this yeah. would really oh, God. mess yeah, with them. Imagine. So <laughs> any, any, any tips, any further tips you can share with us would be greatly appreciated. Yes, so adults are pretty good at flip-flopping, losing an hour, gaining an hour. So maybe on Friday night, you go to bed a half an hour early Saturday, a half an hour, uh, actually Saturdays when you lose the hour. Um, so maybe you only feel like you lost a half an hour. But with kids, mm -hmm. I'm telling you now, you got to start now. Ooh, so tonight. what I would tell people to do is start putting your children to bed about 15 minutes earlier for the next two days, then 15 minutes earlier than that for two days. And then by the time you hit the time change, they're not going to ha have as great an effect because you've already started to switch right. their circadian rhythms a little bit. Oof. Uh, I want to jump here to... Uh, the apps because there are huh. so many options out mm -hmm. there calm headspace uh, the, sure. the, 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 yeah. the, the top of mind um i feel like they've become increasingly more common <clears throat> yeah. uh yeah. do you are you a fan of them do you feel like this is something else that we could maybe try to incorporate in to help us out uh like a guided meditation to help us through this transitory period mm -hmm. So, so yes and no. So remember, um. meditation is really designed to bring somebody present. It's not designed to make somebody fall mm. asleep. And so what a lot of happens with a lot of meditations is people are already sleep deprived and then they relax and then they get super sleepy. So I don't have a problem with the head spaces and the calms of the world, but to be fair, you know, you could do all of this yourself just by regulating your bedtime. Mm. I tell people all the time, if you wake up at the same time, seven days a week, not during the time change, because we're changing it a little bit, um, what you'll learn very quickly is your circadian rhythm will stay in sync. Now, if you can do it based on something called your chronotype, uh, which oh, as, yeah. as y'all know, is my kind of my thing. Mm -hmm. If people want to check it out, go to chronoquiz.com and um, you can learn genetically speaking what your appropriate sleep time is and then you don't yeah. have to worry about things like that. But to be fair, it definitely can be helpful. Okay. Huh. I think I was a bear, I think. I gotta go back and take oh, it. Yeah, I, I need think to you do were. this. I and then I might need a note from Dr. Bruce. You're gonna need to all this. To the bosses. Okay, uh, real quick, how many hours before bed should we have our last meal? Oh yeah. 
So I like to do what I call the three, two, one rule. So three hours before bed, you stop alcohol. Two hours before bed, you stop uh, food. And one hour before bed, you stop hydration, as long as your doctor tells you that's OK. Now, there are some foods out there that can help with sleep. Yeah. Um, one thing that's going around that people might have seen on the internet is the Sleepy Girl Mocktail. Oh, we, yeah, we, we discussed this with you. We debunked you. that with you, you last time you were okay. with us. Remember, it's, not, it's bunk, OK? Yeah. Like, People really shouldn't do it. I'd rather you take a banana, boil it, and then drink the water because it's infused with magnesium and phytosteroids and can really be quite helpful in relaxing you to sleep. What? Alex is shooketh. She is shooketh. Take an entire banana. I will try anything oh, that Dr. On. Bruce yeah. says will help. This, this plot twist, I was not expecting. What am I doing with this yeah. banana? You're boiling it. So, so I call it banana tea, but all you do is you take an organic banana, you okay. wash off the outside, cut off the tip and the stem, leave the fruit in and the peel on it, okay? Then take the two halves, drop it in just boiling water. So, so far, I've just asked you to wash off a banana and boil it, okay? okay. For about five minutes till it turns brown. Then you drink the water. It's loaded with magnesium. By the way, my daughter says it's very banana-y, uh, Dad. It's sh shopping. So, <laughs> so you have to like bananas. But I have one mom, and she pours it into popsicle molds, and she gives it to her kids for dessert after dinner. Sir, Whoosh, sir, we like are going to put this to the test. You just challenge accepted. We'll call you on Monday. Yes. <laughs> with our results. Dr. Bruce, always a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Uh, you guys have a good one. You, you too. too.